All right, welcome to the KEXP live room here at KEXP where we broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we stream all over the world at kexp.org. My name is Troy Nelson. I am very excited today, and we've got some legends in the house right now. And Christian McBride's new John, thank you so much for taking this time. And if you are all ready, let's do this.
Awesome. You're listening to Christian McBride's new John here in the KEXP live room. Troy, I know you usually say you like to do the songs right behind the other, but mm -hmm. uh, Marcus has got to switch to the bass clarinet here. So no we problem. are going to take a little second. It's, I'm, I'm uh, blown away. This is like... One of those moments where no matter who I'm looking at playing the instrument, like I look at the drummer and I'm like, that looks impossible. <laughs> I look at you, that looks impossible. I look at the saxophone, this all looks impossible. You're all uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, well, this thank is you a, very much. Thanks for having us. We're yes. going to play, uh, play a song now called John Day, written for one of my closest friends that I grew up with back home in West Philly.
Wonderful. You're listening to Christian McBride's New John here on KEXP.
Beautiful. This is Christian McBride's new John here in the KEXP live room.
just awesome. Christian McBride's new John, once again, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, I'm so lucky to be this close to greatness. That was wonderful. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Where, and where did you find all these, all these guys? <clears throat> well, we all collectively go back. You know, um, mm. the, the jazz community is a very uh, tightly knit community. We, it, word of mouth is still the number one way that people find out about each other in, in, in our world. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I've known Nasheed for almost 30 years. Uh, I've known Marcus for just over 20. And uh, J Josh is a, rel relatively a newcomer, but we, we go back uh, almost a decade. So uh, it's been a tightly knit group since uh, 2015. Yeah, it's amazing. Your, your journey has been amazing. I mean, I, I, and I want to take you all the way back because I would say you've come quite a long way since you joined Bobby Watson's group Horizon <laughs> when you were uh, just 17 years old. And you've appeared on hundreds and hundreds of recordings, eight-time Grammy Award winner. I mean, really, Christian, uh, Christian, what else do you have on your bucket list to do as a professional musician? Uh, to give younger musicians an opportunity to do the same things that I was doing when I was between the ages of 17 and 30, you know. Uh, there's so many great young musicians out there now, and uh, not only am I taking some of them on the road, but all of these gentlemen are taking younger musicians on the road with their collective bands as well. So mm -hmm. that's what it's time for us to do. And when you were younger, when you were a kid, uh, your uncle Howard got you into jazz, mm -hmm. and your uncle Butch brought James Brown into your consciousness. So I know that jazz has been in your family, but would you say that it actually really started in 1980? Take us back to the Atlantic City Jazz Festival. Well, that, that's when I decided that I wanted to play the bass. Uh, my father was playing with Mago Santa Maria at that time, and I had seen him play with Mago many times, but there was this one particular gig. Uh, it just, that was the night where it all kind of hit me. I thought, I want to try to play the electric bass like dad. And I got my first electric bass uh, a year later and uh, it's, it's never left my hands. <laughs> it must have been a magical night. I mean, I was looking at the bill. It was like Ella Fitzgerald, right. Mel Torme, Dexter Gordon. Mongo had Dizzy as a guest. That's correct. I, yeah. Right. Fantastic. And speaking of back in the day, what can you tell me about the time that you spent at a club in the village called Bradley's? That's where, that's where I got my degree. I, did, I went to Juilliard, but I think I, I got my jazz degree at Bradley's. Um, I mean, Bradley's was before Marcus and Josh, but Nasheed knows about Bradley's, and uh, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of lessons were learned on and off the stage in that place. That was like the central nervous system of the jazz community, uh, particularly when people like me and Roy Hargrove, uh, when we first got to town, that's where we went. Cool. Yeah, I was very curious. And you, uh, you do so many things, and you are a master of so many things, but some people don't know that you are also a fantastic writer. And a few years ago, you wrote about, uh, it was a tribute for Stevie Wonder on his 70th birthday, and it's so eloquent. And also your tribute to McCoy Tyner was also a fabulous read. And so what can you tell uh, any listeners who might not be as familiar how important was and is McCoy Tyner in your life and in music? I don't think it's a big stretch to say that there's modern jazz piano before McCoy Tyner and modern jazz piano after McCoy Tyner. Literally every pianist who has made some sort of a dent uh, in the jazz world uh, creatively has some McCoy Tyner in their playing. What he did with, uh, with John Coltrane and, and beyond with his own groups, uh, he literally created new language for a jazz piano. And the fact that he happens to be from West Philadelphia uh, is not a bad thing. It's pretty cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. 
And uh, speaking of legends that you have been inspired by and also have gotten to work with, so just right here in the KEXP live room, uh, just recently I had Madison McFerrin in, you know, da yeah. daughter of Bobby McFerrin. Yes. And her and I both expressed our love for Herbie Hancock. Mm -hmm. And just this is uh, just coming from personally, I would love to know what it's like to work with somebody like Herbie Hancock. It's exactly as exhilarating as you would believe it to be. I figured. You know, it's, it, it, Herbie is uh, is as advertised. You know, not not only is he a living legend, but he's just uh, his normalcy is sort of abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, genius, I would say. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, he he uh, he's still creating. Uh, at age 83, we just uh, we just saw him a few days ago at the uh, Monterey Jazz Festival, and it's just amazing how uh, he just doesn't slow down. He, doesn't he slow looks down. great. He sounds great, and uh, he's just his level of creativity is is pretty admirable. Yeah, still touring all over. That's and, right. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And uh, once again, thank you so much, Christian, for taking the time to do this. And lastly, what I want to uh, ask you is for you to tell the listeners about the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. It's a place where you have to go if you come to New York City. Uh, it, it's a place that uh, strangely didn't exist. Uh, before 2000, uh, they, there was there was briefly a jazz museum in Midtown Manhattan in the 70s, uh, but only lasted for a couple of years. And uh, a gentleman who passed away by the name of Leonard Garment, uh, he was a, a lawyer and from Brooklyn. Uh, he decided that uh, why is there no home for jazz in Harlem? And so he appointed. Uh, Lauren Schoenberg and myself as the directors of the museum, and I've been proudly been associated with the museum since 2004. And uh, we have Duke Ellington's piano there, and I uh, mean all kinds of cool stuff, and and really uh, uh, some programming that I think everybody would would dig. It's wonderful. Well, once again, Christian McBride's new John, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, bring us all of your talent here in the KEXP Live. Thank you very much for having us. Yes. It's a pleasure. That was Christian McBride's new John here on 90.3 KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at kexp.org.